Hi everyone and welcome to Wilsathon. If you don't know what Wilsathon is, it's a week-long readathon dedicated to reading Jacqueline Wilson books that I'm hosting with several of my friends. I've been so excited about this for so long and it's starting today and I'm going to be filming, hopefully, fingers crossed, the entire week. I'm today repping this look, um, my Tracy Beaker jumper that I bought off Etsy and this hairstyle which was so difficult. This is why you don't see me in any like fancy hairstyles because I struggled with two high pigtails. The first book that I'm going to be reading this week is My Sister Jodie. This meets the challenge of reading my favourite Jacqueline Wilson book because it's definitely in my top three. I can't distinguish between all of them so I have just decided to go with this one because it's the one that I do want to reread the most out of them and it also meets the challenge of reading a book with my favourite colour on the cover because my favourite colour is purple and I believe this will also complete the challenge for reading a book for older readers so that already ticks off like three of the five prompts on our bingo board. I'm going to do my editing of my video now and then at two so in a few hours time I'm going on Rhiannon from Welsh Readers Live Show. I'm probably not going to be looking like this because the live show is not about Wilsathon and people will probably be like, what What are you dressed as? I might try and start this then. I would really like to jump into the readathon and just read Jacqueline Wilson books. However, I do have a couple of books that I haven't quite finished yet and I know that I could definitely finish one of them, the one that I'm physically reading, if I read it on the live. But then at the same time, I'm like, I could probably read most of this book if I picked it up on the live. So I'm undecided but I will update you when I have picked some of this up. Okay, it's like quarter to 11 now and I just wanted to jump on to update the vlog because I'm finally gonna pick up a bit more of this and read some more. It was really nice to be on a live with some people who I'd never been on a live before. Um, we had a really nice time and I read 60 pages. So I did two sprints there, one for half an hour and one for 45 minutes, but to be honest, I only really read in the longer sprint because in the first one I was finishing editing my video, which is now live on my channel where I tier ranked all of the Tracy Beaker characters. I'm now going to get into bed or well sit in my room and try and read a little bit more. I'm not that tired yet. I think I've got like another couple of hours in me. I'm really enjoying it so far actually. I can definitely tell that it's one of her books for older readers and it's been quite sad in places. I'm not going to spoil anything but knowing the ending, if you know, you know, I recognise some things that are sort of foreshadowing or sort of like sad reading them reading certain things that are said knowing what's coming what i'm gonna do now though as i say i think i've got a couple of hours in me i'm going to put on some more reading sprints so at the same time as i was live on rihanna's channel uh Aoife decided sort of last minute to do some reading sprints for wilsathon on her channel and charlotte and i think Shah as well were live on that with her so i thought that i would put them on now because you can still watch lives back i want to see like the chat about Wilsathon because I think it will get me even more hyped and then obviously when they're sprinting I can read some of this as well so I'm not sure if I'm going to watch all of it because it's like two and a bit hours I think but I'm at least going to do the first sprint with them um, and then maybe do the other one in the morning and I think what I will do after that um, just before I go to sleep is lie in bed and watch the first episode of the story of Tracy Beaker because after doing my tier ranking video I just I just want to rewatch that whole thing. I've never seen you two on that. It's been a while. It's been a while. But we do have Tracy on the back. So. I say it every time but would it be a vlog for me if I wasn't literally lying in bed in at least one clip. So I did like one and a half of Aoife's sprints and I think I'm gonna catch up on the rest of them tomorrow because I have just got so tired, you know, when you feel your eyes go in. It's weird because I definitely feel like I could stay awake and look at my phone, but reading, I just feel like I was about to drop off. So I put my book down, I got to page like 110-ish, so considering I've only read for probably about an hour and a half today in total, that's not too bad. So far, I'm just really shook by how many like references, how much foreshadowing there is to what's going to happen at the end of the book. Obviously, the first time I read it, I wouldn't have noticed that because I didn't know what was coming, but now that I do, I'm like... <laughs> This is not subtle. But I remember Jodie being a lot older, but she's like 13, I think. Something else funny is one of the characters described the school that they're at as a dumping ground for children. And I was like, 
I see what you did there, Jackie. We love a subtle Tracy Beaker reference. But now I'm going to watch an episode or maybe like half an episode of the story of Tracy Beaker. Now I think I'm gonna restart it from the beginning at some point, but after doing my tier ranking video, I just, I want to watch an episode with Roxy Wellard in it because as I said in that video, she's the queen of the DG, the jumping ground. This is the episode that I'm gonna watch because I remember it like so well. Um, it's the one, it's called Roxy the Rock slash we're off the map now. Um, and it's basically Tracy and Roxy battle for the title of Queen of the Jumping Ground. And I remember them having to like eat a load of chocolate. What an iconic theme song, honestly. I'm not gonna keep checking in all night, but I remember thinking Roxy Wellard was so iconic and just, yeah, wanting to be this girl so badly. And I just playing it back, I'm like, oh my God. I'm, obviously she's gonna be young because this was a long time ago. I look at it now and I'm like, wow, but like, just listen to her. iconic honestly we stan um yeah i'm really gonna go to bed now but oh already the nostalgia is hitting too hard it's like 11 o'clock now on sunday and i am shattered because i stayed up watching tracy beaker i only watched that one episode but i did watch the whole half an hour so yeah i'm really tired because i was watching tracy beaker on a saturday night we love that. So I'm back in my jumper today and I'm now going to go on Shannon and Anna's sprints. They've pushed it back an hour this morning because I think all of us have just hit a wall of tiredness today, uh, which is just funny that we've all felt it at the same time. But I asked if I could go on with them today because it's been a few weeks since I last went on their Sunday morning sprints and I really enjoy chatting with them and just being on the sprints is always such a lovely cozy vibe. So they start in like 10 minutes, so I should get going, but I just thought I'd come down and make a cup of tea. I did finish watching Aoife and Charlotte's sprints from yesterday, this morning. So I've already done quite a lot of reading, to be honest, today, and I'm on page 150 of my sister Jodie. I will see how far I get through these sprints, and then I guess I'll talk about it properly a bit more. Well, this lighting is rough, but as it's dark and cold outside, this is what we're working with. I mean, my hair is greasy anyway but i thought i would just check in i don't know if i've actually checked in since doing the sprints My, today has just gone away with me honestly we were all so tired on the sprints um and i feel like my body is acting as if it really is february half term to so update on my sister jody i have got to page like 275 now i'm really enjoying it and i can see why i loved it so much i really love the way that jacqueline wilson like develops these characters and you really feel like you're there and you know them. And even with a lot of books that I read nowadays that I love, that is something that I feel like is quite rare to find, like that real sense of being fully immersed in that story and knowing that character inside out. And I think that's what I really loved about Jacqueline Wilson's books. The thing that I'm finding strange is the fact that I read this, obviously as a young teenager, I think I was like 11 when this book came out, 11 or 12. It was one of the last ones that I read before I stopped reading Jacqueline Wilson. When I read it, I was a little bit older than the narrator who is 10 going on 11, but I was a little bit younger than Jodie who is 13 going on 14. And I think at the time I thought Jodie was like so cool and really like grown up. And I guess I was a bit more like the little sister, but now as an adult, looking back and now i'm obviously 24 and seeing jodie this 13 year old girl and just thinking oh you're just a kid i still don't know if it's going to be a relationship or not but we've learned that this guy is 18 and jodie has said that he's kissed her i don't know if that's true but like that i probably read that as a kid and didn't think anything of it but now i'm like that is not okay. I think I'm going to finish watching the US episode of Drag Race that I started this morning. I thought I might watch something else as well. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to decide, but I was looking at different things and I was looking at the illustrated mum and I just had to share the cast of the illustrated mum because I don't know, to me, I'm like so many classic TV icons in this. I think it's because I also grew up as a big fan of Coronation Street and there's a few Corrie icons in this. I mean, people might know these people from other places, but Holiday Granger was, I'm sure she was in Waterloo Road as this girl who was Chloe's friend and uh, basically pretended that Tom Clarkson was inappropriate with her. Luke Bailey, another underrated Waterloo Road legend. Marley and Flick, 
were the OTP from the original series of Waterloo Road. They were such an underrated couple. I love Tim so much. I feel like people know Michelle Collins, but <laughs> I always know her from Coronation Street. Sasha Parkinson, another Corrie legend, part of Coronation Street's first ever like FF relationship, Sophie and Sean. Lisa George is also a Corrie legend. So I feel like I need to watch it because I did not know that this collection of icons we're in this film. But yeah, not sure if it's going to be the one I watched today, but I just wanted to share that. This is a representation of me trying to focus on getting my shit together. Hello, so it is Tuesday now. Please ignore the lighting. So yesterday I finished My Sister Josie and I don't think I'm going to rate the books that I'm rereading because like how can I put a number on something that has so much nostalgic value? To me, I feel like it's always going to be a five stars because I have that connection with it from when I was little. One thing that I will say about it now I've come to the end is there's something involving a badger, let me know if you've read it, that I had completely forgotten about and I knew the main thing was coming and I was prepared for that but the thing with the badger wasn't quite ready for that. Also I forgot how quickly this all wraps up. I thought that the big thing happened a lot sooner but it, there's literally only about 30 pages to go when that happens. But it really hit me. I think it hit me a lot harder this time because I probably read it when I was little and was just like, oh, that's bad. And then f finished the book 20 pages later, put it down, moved on to something new. Whereas reading it this time, it was like, I'd been building up to it for so long as well. Although I'm just gonna put this in here now because I've just remembered. Is there an excessive use of the word fingering in any of the books that you've read? <laughs> because once I started noticing it so many times, honestly, so many times, next time you read a Jacqueline Wilson book, look out for that, especially this one. And I'm going to just be thinking about it now when I read future ones. I do actually have this My Favourite Books journal that I found where I wrote loads of book reviews in when I was younger. This is Jacqueline Wilson themed, but the book reviews in here are for all sorts of things. I do actually have, as the very last one that I did in here, my sister Josie. So I'm gonna read it out. Wow, I've just finished reading Jacqueline Wilson's latest novel, thoughts still floating around in my head. I was so amazed by it, I couldn't help reliving the best bits, reading them again. I give this inspiring, gripping novel 10 out of 10, one of the best books I've ever laid eyes on. I would recommend it to anyone aged around 11 plus, was I even 11 when I was right? Yeah, I was, okay. Um, who's prepared to read 400 pages. It went so quickly, I couldn't believe I'd read it all. So go on, get lost in a world with Pearl, Jodie, Harley and their friends. <laughs> 11 year old me there summing it up better than I can now at 24. In terms of what I'm going to read next, I realised that I didn't talk about my TBR, but I do have a video on that. So the other books that I had on there were Candy Floss, Lola Rose and Opal Plumstead. And because I loved rereading My Sister Jodie so much, I really want to start with the other book that I would consider to be my favourite, and that is Candy Floss. So I'll start this tonight and check in and let you know how I'm getting on with it soon. Actually, I said I was going to go, but I've moved about two metres and realized that I was going to talk about this, The Jacqueline Wilson Diary, 2006. Honestly, this is a riveting read in itself. Do you know, I was always told off in school for having really bad handwriting. So my ideal day, I would wake up on a sunny day and then I would have sausages, bacon, tomatoes, mushrooms and egg. Then I would go to Cadbury World and eat loads, with a Z, of chocolate. Then I would go to the beach and see Jessica and Emma. I would have dinner of cakes, chocolate, burgers, and chips it would be delicious then i would go fishing and crabbing <laughs> that's what i used to do when i went into cornwall on holiday after i would get a fudge and malteser flavored ice cream i would then go home and read then watch the television and <laughs> whilst playing boggle i would have a curry for tea then go to bed for my worst day ever i would fall out of bed and it would be tipping it down with rain. Instead of a full English breakfast, my mum would force me to have sprouts. Yuck. On the way to school, I would bump into a lamppost so hard my head started swelling. A huge vicious dog would attack me and my hand would be pouring with blood. At school, I would get hit and shouted at and sent to the head teacher's office loads of times. On the way home from school, I would fall and break my leg. I would have to spend the rest of the day in a manky old hospital. That's my worst day ever apparently, so I'm so glad that that hasn't happened yet. 
my record of 2006, I am age 9 to 10. I get two pounds to two pounds 50 pocket money a week. My hobbies are swimming, gymnastics, and writing stories. My favorite food is chocolate, Smarties, and Capri cream eggs. <laughs> and my favorite band or singer is McFly, apparently. My predictions for 2016, I will live in a house of my own. <laughs> absolutely not it's now 2021 and like am i ever going to be able to afford that no i will live with my boyfriend if i have one <laughs> no i will look like thin and sporty i mean we love that um indoctrination from a young age of what women should look like i will work as a writer and an olympic swimmer one of them not enough i mean i haven't achieved either of those things to relax, I will sit in a jacuzzi or go for a swim. We love that. Um, none of my predictions were accurate. Sorry, but we're literally on page two of this book and the word fingering is being used. So in my mind, that is now confirmed that this is just a word that she uses in all of her books. And now I fear that I've ruined all future reading experiences for myself because I've noticed it. Page eight. Don't let the fact that I'm wearing exactly the same outfit for you, it is actually Wednesday. A day has passed since yesterday's clips, but something very exciting has happened because I've been to the supermarket and I thought I would show you the things that I got there, the exciting things, not just like the weekly shop, because I've got my childhood snacks now. But first of all, to update on my reading, I'm up to about page 100 of Candy Floss. I don't know where the book is. It must be downstairs somewhere, but I sat down and read it for like half an hour, 40 minutes before work this morning, and I was reading it so quickly i'm loving it so much i think i'm loving it more than my sister jody because this one is so fun and i'm not sure if anything deeply traumatic happens i think it's just a good time all the way through i think this one's giving me even more nostalgia because i was in year seven when i read my sister jody so i was already at secondary school and it sort of deals with an older character although the narrator was about 11 or 12 whereas in this i'm not sure how old floss the main character is meant to be but i'm pretty sure that she's still at primary school and i definitely read this one at primary school as you saw in the inside cover i got it for my 10th birthday the scenes when she's in the classroom it's just making me feel so warm and fuzzy like thinking about being in my own primary school and just being that age and coming home from school and just lying on the carpet in my lounge and devouring jacqueline wilson books so those were the books and in terms of food for the childhood snack thing, I did get more things than I realised actually, but I'm excited to get going with these over the next couple of days. So for lunch tomorrow or the day after, I'm going to have a Dairyly Lunchable. I cannot wait to have this. It's probably going to be shit, but I was never allowed these when I was little. Then I got some Choc Gems. These were my favourites. I did like ice gems, but I loved the chocolate ones even more. So I got a whole bag of these because I can definitely treat myself to some of these throughout the week. Then I got a drumstick basically because I didn't want to buy a whole bag of squashies, but I love squashies. They're my favourites and I always loved the drumstick lollies. So yeah, just had to do it. And then I got some fruit winders. These are one that I had more often, I think, because they were like healthy so i'm gonna have one now and i'm gonna see how they compare to my memory of them i did also buy a full box of these but there's only six rolls and like we'll get through them in the house i'm sure we will so this is what it looks like i don't remember it being this small and i don't remember it coming in like a metally foily packet but okay it's got the paper oh yeah the paper like how it used to the paper itself is also like a little cartoon strip but yeah the idea is you sort of eat it off the paper but some people would just like ball it up but i don't remember it being in two strips like this i always used to eat it like by pulling it apart off the paper but some people do just take the whole thing off and then like ball it all together i'm not sure how i feel about that like, it tastes nice but like the texture it's literally like melting into the paper anyway, i'm gonna unwind the whole thing Okay, I don't remember how long they used to be. I feel like it's difficult to tell because I was so much smaller then. It's so difficult to get off the paper. Okay, let's just ball it all together. This is what the cool kids used to do. This is actually disgusting. And I have washed my hands before eating this. Okay, it is a bit better all balled together because it gives it more of like a chew because there's more to get through. So for the others, I'll definitely do it like that. But 
quite good not quite as good as my memory of it though which is disappointing i'm also going to have a drumstick just to just to wash it down and then i'll have the other sweets later but now i've completed the have a childhood snack prompt so that's good oh my god i was expecting like the consistency of a squashy and that is another work week over it's friday now i don't even remember if i checked in yesterday who knows but it's the end of the week, which means that I can now just focus on finishing off Wilsathon. So I'm still reading Candy Floss. I really hope that I'd have finished it by now, but I'm on page 228. When I actually sit down and read it, I read it so quickly, but I've just been so busy. Now I am doing sprints with Rhiannon from Welsh Reader again this week. We're doing it every Friday, but on her channel this evening and that's in like two and a half hours i could definitely finish this in that but i'm kind of thinking i want to pick up something different in those sprints i don't know i love reading jacqueline wilson but i also kind of feel like i'm ready to pick up something else now but i will try and update on this one by the end of today i really want to try and finish it today but for now it's like half two and i'm starving because i've had my head down all day doing work and stuff so i'm having my ultimate primary school lunch that i would never have been allowed some dairyly lunchables and then a packet of choc gems my favorite snack from when i was younger and i'm also going to watch my mom tracy beaker at least the first episode while i'm eating this because i still haven't seen it i've been telling myself every night this week that i would but there's always been something on last night i was watching drag race uk side note if you're watching that let me know who your favorite is i I'm literally in love with Bimini Bamboo Lash. Honestly, they're probably like not only my favourite drag queen on that series, but one of my favourite drag queens ever. But yes, I'm going to watch Tracy Beaker Returns. I've got a very Tracy Beaker inspired outfit on today, I feel. Hi. Come on, Fred. How about a food? Orange. Uh, Jess knows what she's doing. We're in here all the time, aren't we, Babs? If Lunchables tasted like that back in the day, I really don't get the hype. Like, they were okay, but the biscuit is a bit cardboardy. I think, like, a normal Ritz cracker would have been better. But I'm sure that they're, like, healthier than they were back in the day, so they're probably not as nice. Anyway, Tracy Beaker, let's get on with it. Tracy is a bit of a Karen, isn't she? Sorry. The way she just had a go at this teacher. You know, really <laughs> it was really iconic really when she was a child, issues. but like, now as an adult, it's like... Karen. I thought I would just do one final check in for the day while I'm still looking <laughs> vaguely presentable. I just got off my Friday night reading sprints with Rhiannon from Welsh Reader, and I don't know if anyone watching this comes and watches our Friday reading sprints, but if you do, I just want to say thank you so much. Honestly, they're like the highlight of my week. We've done them for the past three weeks now, and it's just so lovely to sit down and read and chat. So, on the sprint, I did finish Candy Floss. And I love this so much. There's not as much like drama, I would say, and like darkness as my sister Jodie, but I loved it even more than that one because it was just so heartwarming, so cute. Floss's relationship with her dad is so lovely and it's so nice to see like a strong, like lovely father figure in a kid's book. Yeah, he has his flaws and his faults, but like who doesn't? And the way that he cared for Floss and just loved her so much was just so nice in their relationship. Oh, it was just so lovely. And it's really cool at the end, actually. And here are the twins from Double Act. So I think that that's probably gonna be it for Wilsathon in terms of books for me, because I don't think I'll finish another one if I start another one. But I think I'll check in tomorrow properly to like wrap up the readathon, talk about the prompts. I do still have the like doodling prompts left to do. So I'm hoping to do some embroidery tomorrow. And just like that, the week is over and so is Wilsathon. I thought I would put the iconic jumper back on to wrap things up so we've officially come full circle. So I thought I would just jump on quickly and wrap up the prompts before I sign this vlog off. So I'm gonna put the bingo board on the screen again and talk through the prompts that I've achieved. So first of all, we've got watch an adaptation and this is a tick. I watched the story of Tracy Beaker a couple of times and I watched the first episode of my mom, Tracy Beaker. I am planning on watching the rest of the series, but I didn't manage to see all of it during the course of this week. But I'm sure over the next couple of days, I'll finish it. And I'm so excited to see the other characters come into it because I loved seeing Cam. I actually think I liked her more in this than I did in like the earlier season. So I'm looking forward to seeing Justine and I think Peter's coming back as well. So that will be really cool to see. Next is Create a Doodle inspired by a book. This is also a tick kind of. I was planning on doing an embroidery, but I sort of didn't 
prioritize it. So today I did like the design for my embroidery. So I was thinking of embroidering like an outline of the two characters of the books that I've read. So Floss from Candy Floss and Jodie from My Sister Jodie. I design my embroidery hoops on my laptop using Photoshop and just like the paintbrush tool on there and like my little drawing tablet thing that I have. I did the design. I'll put a picture of it in here just like a screenshot or something but I haven't actually managed to like trace over it on Tony Fabric and embroidery yet but I'm gonna count it because I have done a doodle I just haven't done what I wanted to do. A book for old readers is definitely a tick. I read My Sister Jodie. It is a snack from your childhood. Another tick. I did lots of that this week. Reread your favourite book. Double tick. Two of my three favourites I managed to complete. A book you haven't read yet is my one fail. I would have loved to have started Opal Plumstead but it was just a bit too long, I think, to get round to in these last couple of days. A book for younger readers. I'm going to count Candy Floss for this one. Read in bed or a bedtime story. I did most of my reading from bed, to be honest. And as you saw, I included a bit of that in my vlog. So I definitely achieved that. And a cover with your favourite colour. My favourite colour is purple. So my sister Jodie covered that prompt. So I actually managed to achieve eight out of the nine prompts, which is probably one of the best results that I've ever had in a readathon because I normally do terribly. I know I only completed two books, but... I'm still pretty pleased with how I did. They were both quite long, even though they were kids' books, they were both like over 300 pages. But that is it for today's video and for Wilsathon. If you participated, I hope you had a great time as well. And definitely let me know in the comments what your favourite Jacqueline Wilson book or your favourite thing that you read or did this week was. If you would like a second round of this, let me know in the comments. Other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're all keeping safe and staying well. And I will see you again next time. And all that's left for me to say is bog off. <laughs>